Do you know everybody? Uh, yeah. I do. Yeah. 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 Bill, uh, Bob Taro, Judge Clark, Mitch Hector, Judge Clark, Hi. Irving Crystal, Bill Rusher. Thank you. Very good of you to have us here today. We're grateful for your time. I'm grateful to all of you for coming and, of course, having a chance. I believe in my belief that you get in trouble when you're talking about each other and not when you're talking to each other. And I think about when we talk to each other. Well, that's wonderful. I, I remember a, a dinner we had at the Union League Club, a somewhat similar dinner uh, before your election, during the, before the campaign, in which we had kind of the same group of writers and intellectuals here. And I remember Irving wasn't here on that occasion. And uh, Irving had... It was Irving. involuntary. <laughs> <laughs> Irving has, has spent the first half of his life avoiding Republicans, and now he's spending the second half making up for his drawing. <laughs> 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 I promise, I promise I'm not going to interrupt your pleasure for more than about a minute and a half, if that. But I just want to thank you and welcome you here to the, to the White House. You may be on your way to the National Aquarium, but Nancy and I thought that it then would be appropriate for you to start in what's often been referred to as the Goldfish Bowl. <laughs> uh, but um, the whole country, is, especially the thousands of school children who visit the aquarium every year, owe all of you a tremendous debt of gratitude. Because of your efforts, not only will the aquarium re remain open, it'll flourish. Sprucing up has begun, thanks to strict and creative management, and I understand that you're already planning some long-term capital improvements. I'm so pleased that Midge Baldridge and Mary Jane Wick and the other members of the National Aquarium Society have made this cause their own. You're proving that private sector initiatives really can work. In past decades, America seemed to drift off course because our leaders insisted that government was the answer to every question, could minister the solution to every problem. Our nation, built by people with a strong sense of self-reliance, neighborliness, and community pride, was being robbed of its special American spirit. So in these last 20 months, we've tried to unleash that spirit again, and I think it's working. From across the country, uh, we've been getting reports from businessmen, from volunteers, and community organizations that are all rising to the challenge. Your experience and these other examples make it clear that we don't have to turn to the federal government to fill every need. And this kind of private sector cooperation can renew the quality of life across America. And I'm going to stop now because we can talk with you more personally than this. But let me close by saying how grateful and how proud I am of each one of you. Thank you all, and God bless you. Thank you.
Fiscal responsibility bill of 82. If I remember correctly, in your letter, you told me that I could do it all by myself, and you're exactly right. Well, I thought it was important, Mr. President, because first, there are a lot of people out here who are important benefits right now. Mm -hmm. That was kind of cool. Then, of course, I believe that we needed some economic incentive within the economy yeah. so that we could just try to stretch out and try to do something about jobs. And um, I did it uh, for that reason. Uh, I'm glad it worked out well. Uh, I'm glad you know something about the OIC. The Opportunities Industrialization Centers began in, as a self-help movement uh, some 18 years ago in Philadelphia. It was during those days, as you, when we were very much involved in trying to better conditions for poor people, knowing from your history, you were the union movement and the kind of thing. And um, I was in the leadership of getting jobs for minorities with businesses yeah. that refused to employ them. And when the jobs became open, I found that people need skills to do the jobs. I said integration without preparation is frustration. So we had to do something in preparation as well as getting the jobs. So I took an old abandoned jailhouse no federal money, no government money, private money, collections from churches. I got a loan on my house. Got a lot of volunteers. From that jailhouse started a training program that matched the jobs that were available with the skills they could get to get the job. Many training programs don't do. <laughs> and also to concentrate on motivation and the attitude. Because if a person has a skill and doesn't have an attitude, he still could not be a benefit on the job. So for the first time, a program occurred that dealt with developing motivation and attitude, self-confidence, self-appreciation, belief in the freedom of that system, belief in what we are all about in America, but also training for a skill for a job that existed within the economy and then on the job. And as a result, in this old abandoned jailhouse turned into a, jail, into a training center, the program began to spread. A fellow by the name of Flip Philippi, who was the chairman, chairman of General Electric at that time, who was the predecessor to Reg Jones, became chairman of the National Industrial Advisory Council to help me to get business leadership for this OIC all over the country. And when Flip died, George Champion, who was then chairman of Chase Manhattan Bank, became chairman of the Industrial Advisory Council. And he's still chairman of the Industrial Advisory Council. And we have the chairman of successful 5,000 of the largest corporations and asked their CEOs to work with the National Alliance of Business, their private industry councils to make the Hire a Teenager program a success. And many new programs were started, but much more can be done. Now, we didn't invite you here today because you don't know what needs to be done. We invited you today to work with the National Alliance of Business and the White House to help encourage other business and private industry councils for public. You can be our ambassadors for private
private sector summer jobs so that we can do a better job next year. And uh, before I have to go, I'd like to say a few words about the National Alliance of Business. This Chairman John Feiler, the Chairman, and will be succeeded by David Roderick, Chairman of the United States Steel. And I welcome Dave warmly to our business government partnership. I'm going to say goodbye and thank you very much and welcome to you. Thank you, Mr. President. I hope you won't uh, regret the decision of the move up that we won't make things too rough for you here. <laughs> <laughs> In closing, let me express our deep appreciation to you, Chief Executives, Officers, Private Industry Council Executives, to the National Alliance of Business, and to John Feiler for their untiring efforts to expand a helping hand to thousands of needy youth last summer. We're proud and grateful. Grateful to all of you and for your dedication. We hope that your patriotism and farsightedness will be emulated and your ranks will be joined by additional businessmen and women in 1983. And now I understand that there's a little photography session that's <laughs> through the one which I'm sure is going to stop the wheels of progress here for a while. <laughs> but, uh, go down by the door and we'll, we'll get started in that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.